In his book, Kindred Spirits, Dr. Alan Schoen tells a story of a Japanese man born in Tokyo, but with a surprising vision. Makito wants to be a cowboy. <laughs> Since Japan offers few such opportunities, Makito makes his way to the United States and sets out to learn all he can about ranching. Eventually, he owns his own spread, but not with cattle. Rather, with that American icon, the bison. Early one spring, a late blizzard hits. Makito discovers an abandoned calf in a snowdrift. He brings her home, christens her Amelia, and installs her comfortably by the hearth. Over time, Amelia thrives in the company of Makito, but her inevitable growth requires him to return her to the herd. That serves just fine until the first time a tourist stops to look at the bison. Amelia, adoring humans, romps over to see the visitor. Sadly, her romp is a cue to the herd to stampede. No fence can contain bison stampeding. And after it happens several times, Makito determines he's going to have to keep Amelia close. He builds a corral that abuts his house and makes it Amelia's home. That plan works fine until the day that Makito turns on his television. It seems Amelia was quite fond of this shared ritual, and she puts her head through the window to watch. Not one to be deterred, Makito solves the problem by installing special windows that allow him to let Amelia watch whenever she wants. In our wildest dreams, we couldn't conceive of a vision such as the one that propelled Makito. Certainly, he went above and beyond the call of what any of us might have done in such a situation. But is it any more extraordinary than the countless visions and the organizations that they've spawned? As many of us have heard, Federal Express was conceptually dead on arrival when first presented by its founder in a graduate-level business course. Xerox Corporation was created only after the inventor of the copier exhausted his attempts to interest any number of premier American corporations in his invention. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity emerged from a dream. Sometime, someone had the first conception of a walkathon to raise funds for a nonprofit, a notion that has evolved into an amazing array of participatory fundraising events. No one has yet determined the source for the visions which come to animate our world, but one theory holds that the divine delivers concepts into the creative center of the brain. In its original form, the idea is beyond word or thought. But the mind is designed to transfer these notions into its operational centers and then translate inspiration into reality. From those visions, we're launched into action to produce them. With such an approach, we are the metaphorical womb into which spirit plants a seed, nurtures its growth, and manifests it into the world. It is wondrous to see that not one of us is barren from this perspective. Yet each possesses their own unique inner vision, an infinitesimally small piece of some grand design far beyond our conception. As I have observed the individual expression of vision through others, I liken it to a magnetic north. Regardless of where a traveler may find themselves on the globe, as long as they hold compass in hand, with sufficient knowledge of its operation, as well as an orientation to where they are bound, Direction is always instantaneous and absolutely clear. While the path may be circuitous due to any number of features of the terrain, direction is never, never called into question. This is the divine design imbued within vision. Once we learn to work with it, it will guide us unerringly. This is the importance of vision to organization. Without it, we founder, for we know not where we go. And without the propulsion it creates, we could never muster the means or energy for it to be realized. As an afterthought, I remember the story of the hummingbird. If you live in the desert southwest, somebody has probably told you of the hummingbird that shows up early in the year, banging upon a window. Some have wondered and discovered that, in fact, it's the same hummingbird from the previous year. It's traveled 6,000 miles all the way from the south of South America to arrive at exactly the same point. Now, the reason it's pounding on the window is because it's famished and it knows that you're delinquent in putting up the feeder. It's amazing. That hummingbird left at one ounce. 
by the time it arrived, which may have been a non-stop trip all those miles, it lost half its body weight. It's not surprising it's starving. And it's not surprising it would rap on the window to get us to solve that problem. The part that is surprising is that such a tiny creature, under such arduous circumstances, could find its way perfectly, unerringly, year after year. This offers questions to consider. Do I know my vision? Do I know how that relates to the visions of the organizations of which I'm a part? Have I learned how to use my own compass and to orient myself to my magnetic north, my vision? How does it work?